Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And at the risk of beating a dead horse, because I have put out so much information about this vitamin D issue, I could not resist writing another article about it. And so I'm going to share some more vitamin D information with you. So according to some experts, Americans are facing an epidemic of vitamin D deficiency. And the answer to this epidemic for a good long time now has been widespread testing for vitamin D status and then supplements. But a 2010 Institute of Medicine report concluded that very few people are actually vitamin D deficient. The report also stated that randomized trials had made it quite clear that there is no benefit to increasing plasma levels of vitamin D to over 20 nanograms per milliliter for healthy people. In spite of this, vitamin D testing and supplementation have become a huge business. Vitamin D sales reached $936 million in 2017, representing a ninefold increase during just one 10 year period of time. Now testing is a whole nother industry. Testing Medicare recipients for vitamin D status increased 83 fold between the year 2000 and 2010, according to the Centers for Disease Control, and the numbers have continued to increase. Over 10 million lab tests were ordered for Medicare patients in 2016 alone at a cost of $365 million. So a lot of people, and then we've got the doctor visits on top of this. Results vary in terms of the testing. According to the lab, the samples are sent to with some reporting normal vitamin D levels as insufficient. Supplements are then prescribed often in amounts that become cumulatively toxic. Dr. Michael Hollick, a Boston University endocrinologist, is one of the most enthusiastic proponents of vitamin T testing and supplementation. He speaks and writes about vitamin D deficiency, which he says is responsible for just about every disease that's afflicting people today. Now, people should really look into and read these things, but the vitamin D solution is Hollick's book. And in it, he hypothesizes that vitamin D supplements might have saved the dinosaurs, writing, quote, I sometimes wonder, did the dinosaurs die of rickets and osteomalacia? What if fortified foods had been around 65 million years ago? Could their extinction have been prevented? End of quote. Interesting thing to mull over, Michael. I mean, sometimes I think some of these people have way too much time on their hands to be thinking about such things. I guess, thank God, vitamin D supplements weren't available or we'd have to run away from dinosaurs today. I, just fantastical ideas. How does somebody like this become the, the source of information about vitamin D? As far out as some of his ideas might seem, Dr. Hollick has had a big influence on the medical profession and on vitamin D recommendations. In 2011, he was able to convince the Endocrine Society, the world's largest group of health prof professionals in the endocrinology field, to adopt his position that, quote, vitamin D deficiency is very common in all age groups, end of quote. He was the lead author of a report that concluded that over half of the U.S. population would benefit from being tested. This was significant because the Endocrine Society's uh, guidelines are used by hospitals, doctors, and labs throughout the United States. Also significant was the fact that this report recommended that vitamin D levels should be much higher than the National Academy report re recommended. And in response, both Quest and LabCorp changed their reference ranges. Based on this, vitamin D testing became standard practice. Hollick recommended that everyone should be tested in his book, and he even provided detailed instructions on how to make sure that the costs for testing would be covered by insurance policies. The result, according to Dr. Clifford Rosen, who was one of the authors of the National Academy report, was to create the appearance of an epidemic, since based on Hollick's new standard, 80% of Americans could now be diagnosed with low vitamin D levels. It didn't take long for everyone, including Dr. Oz, to jump on board. According to Dr. Oz, vitamin D is, quote, the number one thing you need more of, and an article titled, quote, knowing your vitamin D levels might save your life is posted on Oprah.com. Hollick suggests in his book that one of the reasons why vitamin D is one of the best kept secrets about health is that there's no financial incentive for promoting it. He writes, quote, drug companies sell fear, but they can't sell sunlight, so there's no promotion of the sun's health benefits. But Hollick doesn't promote sunlight as much as testing and vitamin D supplementation. And he's been paid by labs and drug companies to do this. For example, between 2013 and 2017, he received $163,000 in consulting fees from drug companies, including Sanofi Aventis, which makes vitamin D supplements, Shire, which makes drugs that are prescribed with vitamin D, and Roche Diagnostics and Cadell, which make vitamin D tests. 
He also recommends tanning beds, at one point telling Science Direct that, quote, exposure to lamps that emit UVB radi radiation is an excellent source for producing vitamin D in the skin. The UV Foundation, a nonprofit division of the Indoor Tanning Association, a now defunct organization, contributed $150,000 to Boston University between 2004 and 2006 to support Dr. Hollick's research. He's also paid a monthly retainer by Quest Labs and has worked with the company for about 40 years. These financial relationships are not clearly disclosed during interviews, but with him, he doesn't mention them in his book, and he certainly doesn't talk about them on his YouTube videos. The bigger issue, however, is that hundreds of clinical trials have shown that taking vitamin D does not improve any marker or health of out or outcome um, for almost any group of people. And I didn't choose to, there are probably three dozen articles in Health Brace Library, so I didn't choose to import all of that information into this article or into this video clip because it would be certainly much longer <laughs> than most of you would listen to a Thursday morning broadcast like this. So I'll refer you to the other articles in Health Briefs which talk about the increased risk for cancer and all kinds of issues with vitamin D supplementation. Meanwhile, several studies do show that the pills might be harmful. In a 2015 article, researchers wrote, quote, there is a common misconception that vitamin D supplementation is safe at any reasonable level or that if some is good, more may be better. Adverse outcomes, including increases in all-cause mortality, heart disease, and some cancers can occur at plasma levels as low as 50 nanograms. African Americans might be more susceptible to these adverse effects than other groups. The reason why so many lab reports indicate deficiency is with no agreed upon serum vitamin D level linked to vitamin D benefits, medical laboratories often establish cut points based on their interpretation of the current literature. Clearly, the cut points selected by the laboratory, the higher the cut points selected by the laboratory, the more people are classified as deficient. An apparent increase in the prevalence of vitamin D deficiency is explained by the use of high cut points. In other words, this is people making stuff up, is the English translation of this. Concerns about vitamin D supplementation are shared by other groups, including health authorities in the UK. And here's their statement in the UK. Quote, there is not enough evidence to support a recommendation for food fortification or widespread vitamin D supplementation for the general population. Unlike vitamin D produced in the skin, there is the potential that vitamin D from suppl supplementation and fortification could build up to toxic levels and there is not enough evidence about the possible risks of raised vitamin D blood levels in the general population over a long period of time. In addition to which, there is quite a bit of research, and I've published articles on this in the library, that the effect of sunlight is different than the effect of vitamin D. In other words, if you take multiple sclerosis patients and put them in the sun, their D levels don't go up by much, but their health, their health status changes. Load them up on vitamin D and they have pretty blood work and no change in their health status whatsoever. So it's not the same thing. And one of the reasons is vitamin D is a hormone, not a vitamin. It is re it's pre produced in response to sunlight by the skin. Low vitamin D levels are a sign of sunlight deficiency, not a deficiency of fortified foods and pills. There's also a considerable amount of evidence now that low vitamin D levels are a result of illness, not the cause, which means giving vitamin D pills to sick people is not only a fruitless strategy, but may be a waste of money and a distraction from strategies that actually may help the patient. The story of vitamin D really is a great illustration of how one person literally can invent a theory and how easy it is to sell that false theory to the medical profession. It's scary and should serve as a warning sign to all that caution is required when receiving even routine medical care. All right, so this may be the last thing I publish about vitamin D for a while because you guys have heard a lot about it, but, but it is so prevalent, this vitamin D testing. Everybody knows everybody should be tested. Everybody's deficient. Everybody needs supplementation. It's simply not true. People have made this up. And so I strongly suggest you read the other articles in the library, make up your own mind about it. But uh, maybe we'll be calling vitamin D the, the, the great hoax of, uh, the great medical hoax of the early 2000s at some point in time. All right, hit the subscribe button if you aren't a subscriber. Join us when we hit 25,000 subscribers. We're going to have a drawing. Somebody will get a $200 gift certificate from our company. Um, and of course, if you hit the bell, the system will notify you when we post new videos, which we do every single week. Um, as usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it. And I will be back to you next week with more news.